Welcome to Digital Asset News, the top stories in cryptocurrency digital assets and break them down to bite-sized pieces. Today we got a lot of information, so let's break right in. So first up, a suit alleges that BitMEX chiefs looted more than $440 million from exchange after finding out about probes. And this is looking pretty bad for Isaac Hayes and the rest of the crew. But remember, this is allegedly, and everybody is innocent until proven guilty. However, this doesn't look good. Also, Bitcoin just had its second highest ever monthly close. So what does this mean? It means that potentially we're looking for a massive bull run coming up. Warren Buffett praises stocks dollar cost averaging, but does it work for Bitcoin? And if you've been on the channel any length of time, you know that dollar cost averaging is what I preach about a lot. But does it really work for Bitcoin? We're going to take a look at that and some other pieces of data like the Bitcoin dollar cost average website. And next to last, looks like Facebook is up to its old tricks by censoring Bitcoin, but yet leaving the hashtag Libra totally intact. Finally, we're going to take a look at a pretty sad case of scams. A British grandma loses 65,000 to crypto scammers. And this is something that we need to take a look out for, especially with the potential bull run coming up. We must protect those people coming into our space, especially the ones most vulnerable, senior citizens. So we'll go over all that. First, take a look at the market. So today is November 1st. Congratulations, we made it. And uh, Bitcoin has yet again closed above 10,000 like we assumed it would. And we are looking at some uh, pretty great prices. Now, it's only up 0.1%, but what is important is that it has maintained above 13,000 and has almost hit 14,000. Now, it actually did hit 14 and went above it for a small brief amount of time but then it was pushed back down. Now, from everything I've read, it looks like as soon as we can get clear past this 14,000, there is no resistance uh, in the uh, TA land universe. I don't know if we can just go 14,000, 20,000 immediately. I don't think that's how it's going to work. However, it is very positive to see it right around this range, 13.7, 13.8. And we don't see like this parabolic, you know, just, just rocket ship all the way up. We're taking little steps, little steps here, little, you know, one step down, two steps forward, one step down. So I like these types of things. I think this is healthy for the market. And I think we are uh, potentially going to go much higher. Ethereum is almost four, at 400. I'm pretty happy about that. It's up 0 0.8, but down 6% for the week, but that's okay. I think we're going to see bigger and better things coming up. Tether's still around 16.6 billion market cap. Uh, XRP, hey, still uh, holding steady, although it is down 6% for the week. And usually it's around a quarter, and now we're looking at 23, 24 cents. So, eh. Bitcoin Cash 2.1 up, uh, down around 268. So I like that. Chainlink is still holding strong at number six spot. So pretty happy about that. 11.21. We were above $12, but uh, hey, what can you do? Now let's see what else we got. Cardano is up four and a half percent after that impressive run with their ERC20 wrapper, or excuse me, exchanger, which we talked about yesterday, where you're taking the ERC20 tokens and directly exchanging it right onto the Cardano network. And that, to me, is a game changer. Now, uh, Gogan, the Gogan roadmap was just put out, which is going to uh, transform Cardano into a smart contracts platform. And that's only in four months. I know some people are bummed out about it, but honestly, I think that's amazing that they're making that much progress that fast. So tip of the hat to the IOHK team, the Cardano, and especially Charles Hoskinson. Uh, he's taking a lot of hits from a lot of different people, and it looks like uh, he's uh, leaving all those people in the dust. But again, we will see. USD coin, uh, yeah, still around a dollar. What else we got? Anything fantastic? 2.4 down for Tezos. That's eh, a bummer. 2.8 for Cosmos up. Congratulations to uh, Cosmos holder. I'm not one of those people. VeChain up uh, 4%, still around 10 cents. Nothing big. And OMG Network at five point. So nothing really too fantastic. Let's see. Celsius Network, geez, a dollar thirty nine. It was just at a dollar thirty. What the heck happened? So uh, still keeps continuing to make uh, impressive gains. But uh, I will keep buying that every forty eight hours. I'm now buying uh, Celsius and Theta is uh, now on my radar, and I'm buying that every twenty four hours. Just dollar cost averaging. So we'll see how it all works out. Anyhow, that's what's going on in the market. Let's jump into today's top stories. So this one. Kind of a bummer, but uh, not surprising. So there's a uh, lawsuit uh, being put out against BitMEX, especially with what is going on. If, you, if you're not fully aware, we had covered this exactly a month ago. Uh, the CFTC charges uh, BitMEX with illegally operating derivatives exchange. They're not so 
upset that uh, this is going on globally. What they're upset is that they are not taking the provisions to actually allow uh, American citizens to not invest in this uh, platform, especially with the leverage trading. So there's that. Then there are the, uh, the AML and KYC or anti-money laundering and know your customer. Uh, it was not as, uh, I guess, in stone or as effective as they'd like to see it. So they charge them against it. And this has been going on for a month now. And then on top of that, uh, there is a loss suit. This is a, a suit following on behalf of plaintiffs BMA LLC, which is Yaroslav Kolchin and Vitaly Dubinin. They seek an order of attachment against HDR Assets. You know HDR Assets is one of the companies, or the company, uh, behind BitMEX. And they're claiming that these guys are wiping out their accounts uh, so when there are judgments against them, potentially, uh, that people can't claim too much because it is all going into wherever it's going. So let me back up. So it states here, the top officers of HDR, like we just talked about, the parent company of crypto trading platform BitMEX has been charged with facilitating unregistered trading and other violations, systemically looted 440 million from HDR accounts, a civil lawsuit claims. A spokesman for HDR called the claims spurious or fake or just ridiculous. Of course, that's exactly their job. They have to say that. Now, again, I will just preface it with this. This is all allegedly. You are innocent until proven guilty for most countries. So we'll see how this all plays out. But again, not looking too hot. So here's the allegations. Uh, while being keenly aware of the commodity features or CFTC and Department of Justice investigations, defendants Hayes, Dello, and Reed looted about, about half a billion dollars of proceeds of various nefarious activities that took place on the BitMEX platforms from defendant HDR accounts, the suit alleges. The suit claims the alleged looting occurred to reduce the amount of assets that could be seized. Well, of course, if you can in some way, shape, or form go, hey, we got no money, uh, then uh, good luck suing us. Uh, that's usually a pretty good plan, uh, especially if you know a lot of people are lined up to sue the living pants off you and get as much money as you possibly can. Now, that is just how corporations and shell companies usually do things. Actually, I can't even say that. I'll be honest with you. A lot of companies will do that. They will start to move things around and they will say, no, sorry, we don't have any money. And then, you know, that's how it usually works. Uh, LLC, C Corp, S Corps. So a spokesman for HDR Global uh, Limited denied the claim saying, Pavel Pogodin of Consensus Law has filed a series of increasingly spurious claims against us and us in the crypto sector. We will deal with this through the normal litigation process and remain entirely confident the courts will see his claims for what they are. How many times have you seen uh, the lawyer from the other side go, you know what, we're not too uh, not too confident in this, and we might lose. That <laughs> never happens. Even if you know you're going to lose, you got to say, we're confident. So uh, we'll see how it all plays out. But um, again, there's some shady things. I never really liked BitMEX. I never really liked the leverage trading platform. I just didn't. I know some, some of you guys uh, really like to trade, and that's fine. I have nothing against trading. Nothing. But uh, I do have a problem with uh, when people just lose their mind and they sink every single thing they have into it. And uh, I always think that's a bad idea. Still do. But I mean, even on the opposite side, even if you're a dollar cost averager and you're like, you know what? I'm going to dollar cost average. I'm going to sell my house in dollar cost average. That's probably not a good idea either. So there's always extremes. Uh, there's always these things that need to be corrected. So we'll see how it all plays out. But uh, man, I think uh, a lot of people are going to get burned here. Anyhow, let me know what you think in the comments section.